flags. Um, Gunner is with Pivot North, so we have engaged an architect. Um, it is Pivot North here locally, and then uh, Rice Fergus Miller up in Seattle, they do a partnership. Um, together they have built over 200, 250 fire stations with design. Um, so they have a lot of experience. They've been involved in some Boise fire station projects here recently, also involved in some Twin, uh, Twin Falls projects currently. And so then also from our staff, she just walked in, good to see her. Uh, this is Pam Orr, the most energetic uh, public education specialist you will find in the state of Idaho. Uh, she does all our public education outreach. And then Mike Barton is here with our Parks Department. Uh, and then Robert Simison, our Chief of Staff, is up there uh, uh, chatting in the corner. Uh, so welcome. Just show of hands real quick, how many of you are Bear Creek Park residents? Bear Creek residents, okay. And how many aren't? Yeah. All right, good. All right. So tonight is, is really informal. We're at the very start of a process with our architects to work on some station design. Um, there's going to be two more public hearings. Unfortunately, I was just kind of half joking. I wish this could be our public hearing for the annexation piece that we have to go through on, on Overland Road. But uh, we're going to be going through a whole annexation piece on Overland Road for that property. So there will be a public hearing then and then probably a second public hearing as part of that process. So that's, that's some stuff coming forward. I um, want to talk about, real quick, how we got to the determination of where we're going, give the back history that, that maybe the media didn't quite tell you or that we weren't able to articulate very well in the, in the first go around of this. Uh, we have in the city a relationship with the Meridian Rural Fire Protection District. So we have this agreement that dates back 20 plus years. For those of you that have been in Meridian for quite a while, Really, it used to be the fire district, the city was a little donut, about the size of this. And now we know what the city of Meridian is and what it's becoming. Some of us don't maybe like it, some of us do, but it's growing fast. And so this relationship, really, uh, the fire department was kind of uh, funded on the taxpayers of the rural fire district, which was a lot of folks. And now as the city has grown, that dynamic is changing, but that relationship still takes place. Uh, so. I became the chief about nine years ago. Ron Anderson was our previous fire chief. Uh, Ron, Chief Anderson had been doing some work on a future site for Station 6. Uh, originally, it was going to be up on Overland Road as you hit the S-curves going to 10 Mile. Uh, there was a sliver triangle piece of ground that the developer up there was willing to donate to the fire department. And so that had started the process and was in the works. Uh, and then Chief Anderson retired. Uh, the mayor was kind enough to give me the nod and so I came in right in the middle of this process and started looking at that little sliver triangular piece of ground I said um I don't know if that's going to work for us uh, and then I as I looked at the piece I realized the Williams pipeline was directly underneath that little sliver of property I said probably not a good thing to put a fire station on top of the Williams pipeline so we uh, uh, started looking for ground we look at several areas within that 10 mile overland area we want to serve the South Meridian folks uh, and ultimately, we landed on the piece of ground that we have on Overland Road. Uh, that was actually two pieces of property owned by ACHD. We purchased that from ACHD and then did a lot line adjustment to make it one piece of, of property. Um, so that is how we got the sign out. You probably saw that for quite a while, future home of a Meridian Fire Station to serve this area. Um, in, in some initial discussions we had with some developers out there, and this really started about a year and a half ago, uh, there were some questions that arose regarding access to Overland and what it was going to become. Uh, and we had heard early on that we were going to have potentially some access issues with ACHD. For those of you that don't know, some point in time, probably long after I'm gone, long after the, the other chiefs are gone, Linder Road is going to have an overpass someday. Don't know when that is. It's not anywhere in the next immediate future. But that's a plan from ACHD and ITD is for a uh, Linder Road overpass. Certainly Linder Road and Overland, we anticipate that's going to build out and grow and signalize and left turn lanes and right turn lanes and all that kind of good stuff. Uh, so we had, we had some initial concerns about that piece of ground that we had purchased with some potential access issues. Um, we started evaluating as well our current fire stations. We have five fire stations right now, uh, and all of them are on one mile main arterial roads. Um, so Eagle Road. Franklin Road, 10 Mile Road, Linder Road, and where is our fifth? Locust Road. Thank you. Locust Road. Uh, so I have the pleasure of driving around Meridian at both early in the morning and then going home at night, and I'm sure you do too, and you know what the traffic's like. Uh, so we had some concerns about busy roads. As we analyzed it, we said the most ideal location of all things were, 
or gray and unicorns were alive, we would put our fire stations on half mile roads. That would be ideal for us to access that onto a main arterial. Um, so we began looking in the area to say, is there anything on a half mile road that would be more, uh, I almost said more better, and I'm an English minor, sorry, um, would be better than what we have today. Uh, and so as we were driving down Stoddard, we noticed Fairgreen and the park. Um, city owned, we said, hey, is there a chance to partner with the city and the parks department on future fire station locations? And that's really where the conversation started. There was a lot of conversation that did take place with various groups, the Parks and Rec Commission, city council members, and really it was conceptual. It was a conceptual conversation. Council, do you think it's a good idea for parks and the fire department to potentially partner together on locations? Yeah, makes sense. We talked to NAMPA, they do a, a co-location of a fire station and park. We presented to the Parks Commission and said, we have an idea. Do you think it's a good idea? And here's what we see as benefits, and here's what we see as some downsides. Uh, and so everybody kind of nodded their head, yes, we think that's a good idea. Uh, so that conversation around Bear Creek did continue internally, that is this a potential location? I'll tell you right now, early on in those conversations, we had no idea about the deed. No, I didn't hear about the deed, uh, truly, until the article came out in the Press Tribune. And somebody said, what about the deed? And I said, what deed are we talking about? Uh, and so ultimately, even when the article came out, I know what it said, I know what it read. Uh, it certainly wasn't the intent. Um, and I, I, let me just say this too, I've known Holly Beach for a long time. There was no intent on her part either. It's just the way it came out. Um, so that obviously spurred some conversations. I got plenty of emails. I thank you all for being engaged in the city of Meridian. Um, and they were polite. I give you credit, they were all nice. Uh, but it certainly started a discussion about, wait a second, is this the right location um, to even have a conversation about? I still believe firmly that parks and fire partnering together in the future is a great idea. I really do. And some of those benefits for me include our firefighters are active. We kind of mandate them to be active. And they also love to be engaged in the community. So if they can engage our community in a park where we have a fire station and gate kids and, and the, the neighbors, we want that. That's something we certainly want moving forward. Uh, but as we kept evaluating and discussing property locations, several things happened. One, the deed happened. We said, we need to look at this uh, because that is certainly an issue that we have concerns about. Certainly hearing your voices that you uh, chimed in and emailed, we said, okay, I, I use this analogy and I have uh, with city council and our internal staff, and I believe it. If you start off a marriage and marriage counseling, that's a little bit rough, right? And so. The, the point is, if we start out partnering with a community and the community is not happy with us, we have some issues to overcome. Um, we also started to engage our architects. Uh, so we had our first meeting and we went out to the site on Overland Road with our architects. Again, they've done this a lot, far more than we have. Uh, and they said, you know what, your site here isn't bad at all. We can make this work. It's big enough. Uh, the slope is great. Uh, your access issues, if we can overcome those, this is, this is a good site. Uh, and so that made us feel better. We also engaged with ACHD, who manages the roads in Meridian, and said, here's our concerns. Uh, we're concerned that once you put a left-hand turn lane going south on Linder, that curbing is gonna come right in front of our fire station, and now we're not gonna be able to get out. Uh, and my hesitation with that is some bad experience we currently have on Franklin Road. So how many of you guys know where the cemetery is? We're across the street. <laughs> that's, that's where we're at. And there's a light right there. And we have several issues trying to get out onto Franklin Road because as many signs as we put up and street lights and blinky lights saying, please don't park in front of the fire station, they do. Uh, and so that traffic backs up and our big truck is trying to get out and we can't. Uh, not only that, when we come back to the station, we're actually turning into oncoming traffic in the left-hand turn lane going west just to pull into our fire station. So we have some bad experiences with intersections and fire stations. Uh, when we met with ACHD, uh, they are very friendly to work with here in the city of Meridian anyway. We, we have a good partnership and relationship. They said, Chief, whatever you need, you're going to get. Uh, so with that curving in the left-hand turn lane, we're going to make sure we don't block you and that you can get out. Uh, so that made us feel a whole lot better. As part of our ongoing research, uh, we have to run fiber optics into our stations. We have a lot of high-speed, uh, I will say, technology stuff. I'm, about, I'm not a technology guy. I just learned how to Snapchat. So my daughter's off to college and she's now showing me on Snapchat. So that's about as techie as I get. But we have to run fiber to our stations for a lot of our processes. On Overland, we have fiber right there. 
if we went to Stoddard, we'd have to run fiber all the way down Stoddard to the tune of $150,000. Uh, we want to put that $150,000 into our fire station uh, because we need to. Uh, the cost of building that we have noticed in the construction industry, it's going up a little bit. Uh, so ultimately, that led to us engaging our city council, engaging internally, getting the assurance from ACHD, and then getting the assurance from architects that we think your site is good, uh, that we made that decision to move back to Oberlin because we felt confident we can do that. Moving forward, we do have partnerships planned uh, that we are continuing to work with parks on. I can tell you because it's public record, uh, the fire district is purchasing four acres that is tied into the 77 acre park out on Lake Hazel Road uh, between Locust Grove and Eagle. Uh, we will be sure to get a sign up saying future site of Meridian Fire Department uh, prior to Brighton and the other folks developing subdivisions so that folks that move out there know I'm buying land and there's a fire station planned here. Uh, so if you don't like sirens, don't buy there, uh, buy down the road a little bit. Um, we think that's still a very good partnership and we'll continue that as we grow, probably long after I'm gone, that partnership where and whenever we can. Uh, so that's kind of the, the backstory of how we got from there to here. We certainly appreciate your input because it, it helped make our decision. Um, when we hear that folks say, not here, and here's why, and here's our concerns, we listen. Uh, and so we took that into account as part of this whole, this whole process. So with that, uh, we are gonna be moving over to Overland Road. Uh, we're in the process just starting of design of a fire station. Uh, this is going to be about roughly a 12,000 square foot station, similar to what we have on Franklin Road. So three bays. Uh, we'll initially probably just house a fire engine out of that station. As we grow and build out, I envision we'll probably have a ladder truck and a battalion chief, our incident commander, that will run out of that station as well. And so we'll be serving South Meridian far better than we are today. That, that's been a priority for us. Uh, as, as a city grows and as fast as we grow, it's always a challenge for any police chief, fire chief, to figure out where do we put our next thing, our next station to serve the community. Our challenge has always been, right now, we have one station south of I-84. Uh, and that's a big challenge because when we have a fire, everything's got to come across the freeway to come help. And this is going to be a huge benefit for us and our, our ability to serve the community. Uh, it be a great benefit to the folks south. Uh, we do have the other station that we will plan out on Lake Hazel. When that happens, I don't know. It's all about budgets and money and timing and all kinds of other, other fun stuff. We also have a big uh, need in the, probably the near future in Northwest Meridian, uh, the Oaks subdivision, that McMillan area that's growing really fast as well. Uh, so a lot of growth, as you guys know, you see it here in Meridian. Um, so that's kind of the size of our station. We don't have tonight any even conceptual designs to throw up here, like, hey, this is what we're thinking about. We're having some initial discussions. Uh, one of the things I'm very interested in, if you look at our current five stations, they're all just cement blocks and a little bit of paint on the blocks and a little bit of design. We have gone out and visited fire stations. We have talked about if money allows putting a community room in that fire station. I know I talked to the HOA president uh, at the city council meeting uh, when I presented a while ago. That was a plan and it still hopefully is for station six, um, a place where our community can come. So if we're doing a pub in event, a bed event one night on child safety or adult safety or fire safety or whatever, we have a place that folks can come to. Um, that's going to be very budget driven, so please don't write that down. Hey, we're going to have a, a, a community room. That's all budget driven and what we can afford. Um, but we certainly want to want to have a place that a fire station is an extension of the community, not a piece of government land. And that's what we're all about. Uh, we will have advanced life support services out of that fire station. I think I talked to somebody at at one of the city council meetings it said i really like the fact that maybe we're adding a paramedic out here that can serve our our area so we will have a paramedic on that engine at station six to serve that area we do have paramedics on all our engines at every station so that's going to be part of what we do moving forward um, so with that this was very informal tonight it's to kind of announce and reaffirm that what you read in the paper about about overland road is true it wasn't april fools or anything like that it is true we are moving there give you kind of an overview of what we're thinking as far as station design uh, also let you know we will have public hearings moving forward, so I hope all you folks that are here tonight come to our annexation hearing and say we support the fire department and we would like them to move to Overland. Uh, that'd be great. Um, if not, I understand, but that'd be really great. Might speed the process along a little bit. Um, Gunner's not and said, yeah, yeah, come on, <laughs> come join us. Uh, just a, a mention on that as far as the annexation so that you all and your area will know you're informed. The, the rules around annexation and notifications 
is that you have to notify within a 300 foot radius around the exterior aspect of your property. That's just the rule. We are gonna go a mile out and go all the way around so everybody in the area knows. I've been watching some developers kind of get hammered about notifications of development and all that. So the rule is 300 feet, which isn't much, think about it. Over the road, go 300 feet around the property lines. Well, that's a couple of bare ground properties. So we're gonna try and extend that out a mile to let you all know on this night, the public hearing is happening for the annexation of that property, and they'll annex it to the city. So with that, I'll throw it up. Any questions? Hopefully you guys have some questions. If not, I'll start just picking on people. That's what I do with fire Well, well thank you, Chief, for explaining the information. So my name's Mark Nero. I live in Bear Creek. Okay. I sent you an email. Absolutely. Um, with a sort of summation of my evaluation. Um, So I think I understand the, the rationale behind you know, perhaps looking at Bear Creek. You mentioned this is a half mile. How did you, how did you define it? Half the mile? half mile, yeah, okay. from an access thing. Um, but did it surprise you? So, and then understanding the, the uh, joint effort, and, uh, you know, combining with the parks. I think, I think there's probably a great amount of benefit to, I don't know, I haven't studied what the impact reports are and what, you know, what people are doing across the country. Right. And I think when you're talking about a new development, as you guys are with the 77 acres, and I think if you signage it, you have to notice out, people then have a choice. They can either live next to the fire department, or they don't have to. Sure. They love our firefighters, right? There's, there's no question. No. More than cops? But did it surprise you that the Bear Creek folks um, responded in the way they did? Uh, I wouldn't say surprise. I mean, I'm at the end of the day, I'm a homeowner. I know, I'm a taxpayer, so I don't think surprise. So I, I think I think there was some. Everybody's got their own ideas, right? Their own opinions. So some of the things I heard, um, yeah, a little shocking, um, but it's the, the person's opinion. I see how sure. So you know, for us to drive by that park. It's interesting that you, you've engaged the parks and, and rec department. I was surprised that they were um, perhaps in favor of it, given the impact that occurs both in the residential area and on Stoddard, especially during all the sports season, which is you know, quite lengthy um, from spring through fall. And I think a lot of us in the neighborhood were, you know, immediately really on Stoddard. You know, have the fire department with, with, with all those children. Yeah. And, you know, if it had been planned for it, it'd be one thing. But I guess, you know, I'm kind of I'm kind of poking at the planning process, right? Sure. 14 months ago, stuff shows up in the fire district meeting minutes, right? And, you know, if you don't attend the meeting, then perhaps you don't necessarily understand the gist right. or the, you know, the, the real impetus behind it. But if you read the minutes throughout the whole next year, right? To me, it struck me as more than just a kind of an idea. It seemed like. Back in September of 16, the commission, the commissioner commission, even suggested that you go out and start looking for potential buyers from the property. Mm -hmm. And then in October, there was actually even somebody mentioned as a potential buyer. So it just harkens me to think forward here 14 months now. And it was really, I think, in the last month that this deed thing appeared that what if, you know, in January this year, you had a buyer from the overland property. Yeah, I was interested. We were, so it's like, I'm not saying you would have sold, right. but I put these things together and I guess I'll make my point. It erodes my confidence in the planning process. I would think that the Parks and Rec, who oversees that part, part of their due diligence, let's say, maybe not the fire departments, but at least the parks would be say, you know, we know this part, and maybe the parks director doesn't know the background behind the properties, but it seemed like the residents of Bear Creek picked up on that pretty quickly. Yeah. And so it's just, that's that's where, you know, my my rub came a little bit with all of this, and I tried to suppress my cynical side. Sure. You did well. <laughs> listening to the meeting minutes saying, we want to buy property, we don't really have money, but we see this four acre parcel that we can join in the 77 acre. And we got some free land in Bear Creek, so I'll tell them, and we got over them, we could sell and probably, you know, make some additional money from what we bought. So the cynical side of me said, 
it's the developer and cities, you know, in bed together. Yeah. So um, I think you know it's just the planning process is probably needs to be tightened up a little bit. But let me let me address that, that because that that was one of the disconnects, right? So we were going down a pathway <coughs> knowing all along, even if Bear Creek revival, let's assume no deed, sure. and it's the ultimate spot. We're just going to try and push this thing yeah. forward. On our end of the, the coin, we know there's a ton of public input process, approval sure. process that at one meeting could get killed. Uh, it could the, the whole issue could just say, no, we're not going to approve this. Through PNZ, through ACHD, through city council, mm -hmm. all of those layers. So I guess we, we were moving forward knowing there are still public outreach meetings that need to occur, uh, getting our architect on board to even do a, here's a potential site design. Mm -hmm. So we knew there was a lot of process. I think the way it, it came out was it's a done deal. We're, we're done. You know, it's, it's moving forward. We're, and, and unfortunately, we, we also heard from a couple folks at the time they were working on the well in Bear Creek Park, and we had a couple folks say, oh, oh my gosh, they're starting. We didn't even get a shot. You know, they're starting the whole thing right now. And, and that was never the intent. And so certainly from our end, we knew there was a ton of process left. I don't think the community knows, hey, there's all these different different times. I think some of the some of the concern that I did hear all about the schools, which ironically, the school district said, we love the idea of having a fire station at the school. <laughs> um, I will tell you, we did do our due diligence in looking at fire stations located next to schools, and is it a good thing? And quite honestly, based on our growth, every single one of our fire stations, we have kids in front of them all the time. Uh, and I, I say this facetiously, but we're firefighters. We're not in the business of, of hitting kids or people. We're, we're usually in the, in the business of saving them. Uh, but we did look around and say, okay, we, we've identified some fire stations that are right next to, directly next to elementary schools, middle schools, and how does that relationship work? Boise just built one uh, that is right directly next to an elementary school. Lots of foot traffic, lots of kids, and it's worked great. Uh, we understand the congestion issue, but I think there's kind of a misconception that, well, you're going to endanger our kids if you put it here. We're in the business of not, not hurting the kids, in fact, saving them. Uh, so I think that, that was our thought process understand there's other opinions out there, right? People think, oh my gosh, there's so many kids. Um, the sports activities and the, the traffic, certainly we were aware of. Um, what we, with this station design, uh, the way it's conceptually just on paper without even having the drawings yet, we anticipated several parking areas and places for the public. So our thought process was, well, they're parking on Stoddard in the gravel, we're going to be offering parking off Stoddard that will be available for people that need to use it. So there's parking stalls. That's just differences in thought process. When you talk about how we were kind of looking at things, um, to alleviate some of those concerns, that's that's where our mind was at the time. Uh, I don't think, um, contrary to those minutes, uh, I can tell you I have received phone calls on trying to sell the property on Overland since the day we bought it. <laughs> and I usually get about four a month. Hey, Chief, you ready to sell? You ready to sell? No, we're not. Uh, so that, the fact that somebody was interested in buying, I've had that for the last three years now uh, that we've owned that property. So that, that wasn't really anything new for us. Um, it may have came that way, across that way on the minutes, but we've been getting those phone calls forever. So I think those are some of the, um, as far as due diligence goes, we were doing a lot of our, let's investigate this, right? So let's, we went over to Nampa because they have a park uh, and a fire station kind of co-located. Now, granted, it's not in a subdivision, um, but there's some residential stuff on the, on the other side of the street on it. So we, we went over there and talked to those folks and said, how does this work out? You know, do you like it? Do you not like it? And they loved it. So we, we did some investigation into that. It wasn't just kind of a random, hey, that, that looks good. Let's try it. Um, but it, ultimately, at the end of the day, the decision was made. So that was, that's a little bit of the backstory on the discussions and planning. I think a lot of it was the size of the park. Two yeah. acres out of that little park makes a big difference. Yeah. Yeah, and, and that was, you know, we engaged with Mike and with Steve Sidaway, and certainly they, they know the history of, of Bear Creek, and, and that was kind of our initial discussions is what, with this grassy area here in the middle, uh, there, and there was really two locations kind of discussed early on, either the parking lot, which we would have had to have rebuilt another parking lot, or the middle grassy area, right? And so what we talk about is what kind of activities occur in this grassy area right now? How big of an impact would it be as far as the things that occur here right now? And certainly, a majority of it, not all of it, occurs over in. So, it, you know, just due process and going through it. But certainly, that park is not 77 acres that we're going to be dying into for sure. 
that park does get pretty full. Yeah. And I mean, they can hardly park there now when they use it. You know, I can't imagine trying to park there with a fire station. You know, my name's Bob Pinner, I live right next to it. I, I don't want to ever see a fire station there. Just so you know, that's my opinion. Yeah. You know, you I mean, if you can, and so <laughs> what I'm trying to get at is, so you guys are at some future date, because it sounded like you were leaving the door open. You're not going to come in there and yeah. absolutely. I don't have that kind of money. <laughs> but, but I'm glad. Uh, we, we try, so just so you know, how, how do we figure out where to put them? Um, we, about almost two years ago, or maybe a year and a half ago, tried, I'm, I'm getting a little older, I forget what. Um, the city council adopted performance standards. What that means is we did a big study. We had a consultant come in, and we talked about benchmarks for the fire department in our service levels. And for us, it's all about time. When your home's on fire, when you're having a heart attack, when you're having a stroke, when you're having a medical emergency, it's about time for us. How quickly can we get there? Um, we have about five minutes from when the time a fire starts to get there and really put it out. Uh, every minute thereafter, it's going to double in size. That's just science. They've done a lot of science on this and, and studies. So time for us is important there. In a cardiac arrest, if you have a loved one not breathing, we have about five minutes to get there and, and get those lungs going again, to keep the brain oxygenated, to keep that, that person alive. So time's really important. So as we look at where do we put fire stations, we try and place them in an area where we can meet the biggest demand within five minutes in a travel time. Uh, and so that's kind of how we go through that process of where. So to your point, we won't be putting one right. Yeah, I'm just you know because of the D thing. I was just hoping that wasn't going to be some backdoor no. deal, and then later on, no. kind of like a uh, you know the schools where you know you have a bond issue and you vote it down, and then six more times that year they bring it up. Yeah. You know until they get their way, they yeah. just beat you down. You know? No, we only have enough money to build one fire station every in so many years. So right. you know we we have found that. Over time, as the community changes, traffic changes, population changes, and a great example is, is Franklin Road, quite honestly. When that station was built in 2000, it was a great location. I was, I was actually working for Ada County Paramedics at the time when that station was built, and it was, it was beautiful. Brand new station, they were out of that little tiny place in uh, downtown Old City Hall, some of you remember that? Uh, little tiny garage with a bed in the corner. Uh, so when we built Station 1, it was great. It was ideal, and we didn't have the traffic we have now. I don't know about the rest of Bear Creek, but I suspect, like me, what we saw was something very different. Based on the article and a groundbreaking, I think, in March or early spring of 18, we saw, my gosh, we're late to the party. They've almost got this thing done. They're going to be putting stakes out. We have to mobilize now. So I just, just want to point out how that looked differently to us than to you, um, because I think that's how it looked to us. Yes. It's almost too late to stop this. Yes. Really, three months isn't very long. Three months of ice and snow and nobody in the park to really talk to. But also, um, had you liked Bear Creek Park and had the outreach to the HOA been sooner, instead of a reaction this might have been more like a conversation and when the community doesn't feel threatened you know it isn't flight or fight my gosh we got to stop this thing because there's no time there's enough time to exchange ideas and and not feel like you have to go for the break so potentially the community might have reacted differently had they been given a year and, know, and known there was a year to have a dialogue instead of, we got to stop the state guys, they're coming. Yes. So just feedback for whoever. We, uh, you you look different been, to us. You yeah. would have met the Bundys up there. Yeah. yeah. Hey, <laughs> you guys can mobilize, man. I can be credit. I saw the flyers. I, holy smokes, you can, you can mobilize. But I, I guess, we in all seriousness. Long, right? In all seriousness. You know, Mark asked the question, let was learn. Absolutely. Um, I think, obviously, moving forward, we're going to try and move in areas that don't have subdivisions yet. We can, we can then say, hey, we were here first, folks. Sorry. <laughs> the old airport, side, the right? airport example. Um, but, but in the future, you know, I cannot predict the future growth of Marina. I, I know what we're doing now. I know what Compass's numbers show for 2040, and it's kind of scary, the amount of people that, that we have coming in, the development coming in, some of that. So 20, 30 years from now, are we need to get to find a 
postage stamp you know, around the subdivision that's already there, we might. Who knows? I have no idea what the future is going to hold. I think that's where those lessons come from. Absolutely. You know, if, if I could turn back time, I wouldn't be as bad as I am. As I am all I can do stuff. And I'd turn back a lot. This would be one where, hey, we can do this differently, have a conversation instead of what the heck's going on. So, yeah, absolutely. Lessons on Without a doubt. I have the bruises to show it. Sorry about the bruises. <laughs> yeah, we're good. We're good. Maybe just along those lines of communication with the community, what what, uh, what do you have in place now after this meeting to communicate to Bear Creek? And I'm actually across the across uh, at Fall Creek. Yeah, so our next communication that you will hear from us is when we go to annex the property on Overland Road, there is a community meeting required. As part of that, and that's what I mentioned. The requirement is 300 feet. Is yeah, that that's just I don't know if it's state law. Help me out, guys. I don't uh, know. Local municipal code. Municipal yeah. code. State, state law is 100 feet. Well, it'd be a couple of RV zones. So yeah, yeah, we'll get we'll get to RV <laughs> place across the street. They're okay with us. So, um, so we will extend that out. That's what we were talking about before the meeting. I've had conversation with city council. We're going to go far beyond the obligation of 300 feet to make sure folks know. Annexation hearings on this day, if you want to come and support us, great. You'll hear us say the same thing. Here's why we're, we're wanting annexation into the city. There's a future fire station on this property on Oakland. So that'll be the next communication. Um, part of that will be some conceptual drawings that help you guys. Uh, at the annexation, we won't have okay. any of the what the visuals of the, of the building look like yet. Uh, we'll develop that as we move towards uh, what would likely be we're actually meeting and planning tomorrow. We'll have another step where we need a conditional use permit um, to utilize what that site will be zoned as. And so with that, we'll start developing um, something of what the building might look like, get some elevations, um, engage you guys, ask questions about how it looks, how it's sited, um, take some more feedback like that. And then if we need to do anything else, we do another one. Uh, the last one that I was involved in was the Boise Training Center, which had the big training tower. So we met with them, the folks that lived around there, several times before arriving at the decision about what that uh, building was going to look like and, and move forward with that application. Yeah, you know, what you'll receive is a postcard from the city of Meridian. So long as the challenge the city has, and I've been watching this play out, uh, as home sell and renters and all that kind of stuff, we we're finding that there are folks that didn't get the postcard because they weren't in this kind of legal address or something like that. So, so as long as your address is right, your name is right, you'll get a postcard from the city and talking about the date for that. Anything this meeting going out to the community in communication? Um, we weren't planning on it. This was a, a time to gather. Um, I think our communication that we want to get out is we've, we've set a location. Uh, that was the biggest thing that we wanted to get out. We'll probably do an update. Um, we try and do a lot of Facebook. A lot of folks go to our Facebook page. We, we do a lot of that kind of stuff. If you go there, you'll see our employment in California right now. We'll probably do a follow-up on Facebook. I think the mayor's office has been really good about next door. I do not even know what that thing is other than it's a communication tool, and I don't want more apps on my phone. Uh, but we'll probably work with KC and the mayor's office to get some communication out of this meeting. Probably won't be doing press releases and all that kind of stuff. This is really about letting folks come and have a conversation. Yeah. When you say annexation, is it just for that piece of property? Just that piece of property, yeah. Okay. And that allows us to bring in and tie in the city. Yeah, no. <laughs> no, just that piece of property. I know about the losing get somehow give them that communication process. Yeah, and typically what they do is I've been watching this play out with other subdivision developments. Part of Part of the reach out on that has included the HOA contacts. Now the challenge that some developers have had is that in other subdivisions, those contacts have not been kept up to date. So we have old contacts for the HOAs. It's been a challenge. I know ours is current with this one. Uh, so the HOA will actually be included in that postcard, along with your homes. Because, we'll uh, uh, you know, I mean, we can help share that, yep. that information because there will be many in Bear Creek who may not be within that one mile. Yeah. Matter of fact, if you if you really look at 300 feet on the site in Bear Creek Park, there would be very few yeah. people in Bear Creek who would have been included in the meeting. So. 
So that's why we're going out and we're going to try to make everybody happy. We'll see. Other thoughts, ideas? I just have one question regarding the pump, the house. How much bigger than the existing building? Will the new treatment facility be? Um, so our overall, the building including the fenced in area total will be under one tenth of an acre, so 0.09 acres. So it's very small. It's uh, dimensions I can give you about 53 feet wide by uh, about 75 feet park. long. Okay. Can you clear off the street for the park? Because we end up with a lot of people parking there anyway. Um, the gravel. So to angle in is ACHD wouldn't allow that. I mean, I can tell you right now that they don't want people backing out into the road, even though the kind of the ad hoc parking in the gravel is something that's going on now. But if you were to go in and and pave kind of inland and do you know curb gutter sidewalk kind of thing where it was designated as parking, ACHD wouldn't approve that. It would. We, we, there's no way that they would allow us to touch the public street with anything like that. We would have to. We would have to go in, pull in, and around, and then pull out. And um, budgets being what they are, and you know that's one more thing in the park, and taking green space with parking. And you know parks are parks are difficult to plan parking for because it's kind of the you know we always like to use the church scenario where you you know Easter Sunday and and Christmas Eve you know the the parking lots fall and Everybody's parked in the neighborhood, and um, we do our best to try to schedule activities in the park where we have softball, and, and uh, if we're going to reserve one field, we reserve that multi-use field between the, the restroom and softball field, but we don't reserve anything else, but we really don't have any control on who shows up. It's a public space, so you have all these little teams that come out, and you know, even they, they'll reserve one field, like I-9 Sports or somebody like that, and all of a sudden there's, they reserved it for 10 different teams, and you have 40 or 50 people. So it's kind of, it, it's, it's really difficult to manage. Um, we try not to overdo parking, because if you go out there right now, or, there's no demand. So how do you balance that? I mean, it's always, it's always kind of tough, so you know that during the, you know, people love living next to parks because 300 days a year, there's nobody there. And you've got great, great amenities that are almost private. So, um, it's, it is tough. Um, you know, I, I think that there will be a day where there is curb, gut, curb and gutter out on Stoddard, and we'll have to kind of plan that into some kind of thought process on how we mitigate the loss of parking, whether it's... Um, Reduce scheduling, or you know, getting the word out to some of these people to carpool. We've done that at Settlers Park, where Pal and Marine Youth Baseball. We we told them that they need to do a, a email blast every week that encourage carpooling and and good behavior in neighborhoods, that kind of stuff. So make good work in the school across the street, and and that helps as well. Absolutely, we're hoping some of the grass will take a little bit of pressure off the park because there's at least yeah, five or six, seven acres of, of open space. There are, there, are lots of, there are lots of teams. Lots of little teams, teams yeah. yeah. We see them all in our process. And, and we have a huge demand for park space and green space. I mean, all of our, all of our stuff is just loved to death. What's well, a convenient place for you all to meet um, the school? Usually we like to try, it's, it's good to try to hold their, our meetings as close to the site as we can, so we can get as many people there. Any thoughts on what's a good school? School is a good part. Yeah. 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 Two churches. Yeah, those are two. We meet at Lowe's. The board, the board meets at Lowe's, but it's a pretty small room. It's the afternoon room, maybe. So I want to respect your time. We've been here now. I, I just want to say I appreciate y'all showing up. I was kind of worried that well, now that we've announced nobody's going to come to this meeting. And so they, I was getting asked from the council. I said, no, let's let's have to see if some folks show up. So I really appreciate you guys taking an hour out of the evening to come and spend some time. I appreciate the feedback well received. 
we'll take that moving forward to see lessons learned. And certainly hope that when you get that annexation notice and some of that temporary use notice that you'll come out uh, and stand before council and say, we're good, uh, we support it. And here's our poster. <laughs> 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 That's great. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.